This is a Sony black and white CRT monitor. SSM 930 is the model number. Uh, it's a 9 inch. And we're going to be opening it up and taking a look at the inside and seeing how well they put these things together. It's got one is an input, one's an output. You have a switch for termination and another switch for DC clamp, which I can't remember what that does right now. There's also a two adjustments for vertical linearity and height, vertical height. Uh, it's got a three prong plug, which is always a good sign, but somebody broke the ground prong off. We'll have to fix that. Uh, it's all metal cabinet, metal chassis. So that's another good sign. Let's just take a better look at the back here. Here is the manufacturer's label made in May of 1992 in Korea, uh, but designed in Japan. Uh, these were, like most Sony things, very well made. Um, it does have the commercial audio and video equipment label. Um, and on the front, it has just very basic uh, controls that you would expect from any basic CRT, probably probably used for security system or something like that. I don't. I wouldn't call this a broadcast monitor at all. Um, it's got vertical hold, horizontal hold, brightness and contrast, and the obvious power switch. Um, it's got a little bit of burn in. I don't know if you can see that right here. Uh, I don't know if my camera's good enough to pick that up, but it's very minor. Um, all I've done so far is clean it up, power it on, try it. Uh, CRT is a little bit tired, but, but nothing that uh, is really to, anything bad enough to write home about. Uh, I'm quite happy with it for what I paid for it. Uh, a good friend of mine went way out of his way and picked it up for me and way into the city uh, which is kind of too far for me to go so i really really do appreciate that and i'd like to thank him very very much for his efforts um so let's uh power it up and uh let's just see what we what we get in uh the next part of the video here Isolation transformer, which I don't really need to do, but we be doing any measurements. Um, the camera hooked up to it. This is a little Sony. Um, CCX Z11. Uh, I really don't know what kind of on of camera this is. If it was like some kind of a webcam or something. I don't know. Um, I kind of don't think it was because it has composite video out and audio out as well, which I don't know of a webcam that ever had those features. Um, but that doesn't really matter. Um, this is a, actually a color camera, but, but uh, it's just being fed in to the back with a standard RCA composite video cable. Let's power it up and see what we get. I'm sorry for the lighting. Uh, it's not the greatest. This is a workshop, not a TV studio, so it's not going to be perfect. But uh, that's uh, 
that's what it looks like. Um, probably doesn't look as good as on video as it does in person, but it's really not bad. Uh, video is a little noisy. That's probably because of the cheap cable that's on it. Uh, I have a shielded one that I was using. It's a little bit better, but still a bit of noise. The diagonal lines you're seeing on the video are from uh, the scanning. The camera picks them up. Uh, it's not actually displaying that on the screen. You can't really even see the uh, burn in. Um, you can barely see that burn in. So that's not bad. Aim it over here. You know, actually, this thing does not have automatic focus. It's it's old. So let's see if we maybe get a bit of better focus out of it. Let's far end. That's not very impressive, is it? But not bad. I can play with that later, but it works. And uh, you know, from being from 1992, which is God, I don't know how many years ago. It's more than 20 years. Let's see, 2019, uh, 2009, 1998. I'm not good at counting. It's uh. It's old. It's it's well more than 20 years old. Um, you know, it must have spent a... It probably has a lot of hours on it. Uh, it's certainly not as bad a shape as some things that I have seen that are absolutely fried. Um, you know, you can literally see the image burned into the phosphors with the thing off. You know, and there's no brightness whatsoever left but you know i mean this you can turn this up and it still gets pretty darn bright um, i've got it set to about oh uh, yes even maybe a little less than 50 percent which uh, is pretty good for me you know being as old as it is it's i'm happy with it um so the next step will be to, uh, we're going to take the back off and we're going to take a look at it and see how well this thing is made. Um, stand by for the next video. So I got the back off the thing now. And all that took was five screws in the back and four screws on the main cover. Pretty simple. So the first thing I'm going to point out here is that uh, this uh, monitor, uh, unlike any other Sony uh, TV or monitor I've ever seen, uh, does not have a Trinitron tube. It has a Samsung 240XB4A, which is very strange. I don't know why they uh, chose to use this uh, type of CRT in this. Uh, maybe it's it didn't deem it necessary. Maybe it's it's more of an economy model, um, or it didn't they didn't need that kind of quality, um, which I, I suspect is probably the case. Um, but nonetheless, strange, that's for sure. Uh, so this is just a standard um, linear power supply, power transformer, voltage regulator transistor down there. Uh, let's 
Let's see here. Let's see here. Horizontal output transistor. So 2SC 3231. It's hard to see through the camera sometimes. Tiny flyback. There's my screwdriver. Very small. Uh, not a very high voltage output. Maybe something like 10 or 12 kilovolts, probably. Um, the set has no ICs in it, except for the vertical output IC, which is located right here. In this heat sink here. It's just uh, an NEC uh, vertical output IC. There are no other ICs in this set whatsoever. None. It is completely discreet. Um, it has uh, no areas anywhere on the board that appear to run hot. None. With the horizontal output transistor. Vertical IC. Can't really see in there very well. Nothing has run hot in this set. Absolutely nothing. The interesting thing here is, uh, well, not so much interesting, but I'll just point this out anyway. Uh, it's, it's got all uh, uh, Rubicon 85 degree electrolytics. Um, some people would probably be tempted to recap something like this. Uh, I'm not. Uh, if there's anything I've learned from experience, it's that, uh, if something is working, don't mess with it. Um, I have no questions about my, I, I don't uh, have any problems with my ability. I'm very confident. Uh, I could recap it, but, um, I, I don't see a point. Um, this... You know, these, of course, these are, you know, being from 1992, you know, they will be a little bit higher in value as far as ESR is concerned, but, you know, nothing in any of the high heat, high current areas looks like it's been hot. Uh, there's no charring or, or um, you know, burning of the boards or anything, uh, of the, the, uh, the circuit board anywhere that would normally have those problems. Um, it, you know, it, it, if there were, then I would, then I'd be looking at taking out the chassis and replacing the electrolytics that are involved in those circuits. Um, and of course, you know, checking the voltages and, um, and everything just to make sure that everything is fine. But, you know, in my opinion, there is no need to go in and replace probably close to 35, 40 electrolytic capacitors, you know, of which maybe only a, a few are going to be off value, you know, an, an appreciable amount. Uh, and, and I really doubt that they're even off that much uh, at, at this at this point, it, it it looks it looks pretty good, but I mean, then again, you can't always just tell from looks. Sometimes you can get an idea, sometimes you can't. But in my eyes, I just I I don't see it as good use of parts to go and just replace everything. Um, you know, you can introduce other problems. Uh, yeah, 
I, I, I don't uh, I, I don't like doing things like that. I don't like doing things that way. Uh, if there's a problem with something, then I have no problem getting in there and and uh, looking around and, and and replacing things. But otherwise, I, I'm not going to be adjusting anything or or uh, changing any parts whatsoever. This thing works, and uh, I I just don't see the need. Uh, all I am going to do is just take a uh, makeup brush and just clean off some of these dirty potentiometers. Uh, clean the dust out of the, the rest of the thing. Um, I'll vacuum it out with a, a soft makeup brush. Uh, there's really no, there's nothing in here that's going to be highly static sensitive. You know, I'm not going to clean any controls. I'm not, I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, I could, but I just don't. I just don't see any point in in messing with it. Uh, leave better alone, uh, or leave well enough alone. That's sort of my motto with uh, electronics. You can, you can you can introduce new problems. Uh, you can damage things. You know, anytime you handle or mess with something like this, um, you are taking a risk of doing damage. Now, I've been doing this long enough that I know that I wouldn't be doing any damage. Um, you know, you can always make mistakes, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be worried about that. I've, I've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, there's really no point in, in worrying about that for me. Um, you know, just light, light, light dust. Very light. Nothing to worry about. I'll clean around the anode. Um, I'll get the dust off the anode. You know, I'll wipe the uh, the glass, the exposed glass around it with uh, alcohol. Just because I'm in there, I don't mind doing stuff like that. That's fine. Um, you know, the circuit board on this thing is tiny. The chassis is tiny. It's maybe 10 inches by six and a half inches. Um, looks like it would be pretty easy to get out. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's well made. They, they don't make stuff like this anymore. Uh, it's a shame, but, uh, you know, uh, when you, it's a shame to see these things, uh, you know, get thrown away or uh, recycled just because they're old. Um, this is the sort of thing that really should go to somebody that uh, will appreciate it uh, and use it and enjoy it uh, as it is. Um, I'll probably just use it as a TV uh, for my shop. It's fine for me. I don't care about color or HD. If I want to watch something in HD, I can go upstairs and watch it on a plasma. That's fine. Uh, this will just be a shop TV. Um, a lot of this stuff now is getting to be, you know, it's, it's old. It's more than 20 years old. It's got a lot of hours on it. Um, it's uh, it's something that shouldn't be recycled, it shouldn't just be thrown away because it's old. They, they they don't make stuff like this anymore. You can I've seen the I've seen newer newer monitors like uh, a Demco uh, have failures relatively short, early early in their in their life, and uh, the quality was just nothing compared to this. This this has been. You know, this this was designed to be worked on. It was maybe not the same as things were, you know, a decade earlier or so. But uh, you know, this is designed to be worked on, designed to be fixed, uh, designed to last. You know, pretty much everything that's in this set, other than you know the flyback, you know the 
the inductors, the yoke, you could pretty much just get off the shelf for, you know, a few dollars. It'd be very cheap. Um, these, these things will practically go forever. Uh, no, not forever, but they'll last a darn long time. You could even replace that transformer if it went open, but, uh, or something went wrong with it, but I really don't see that happening unless it gets struck by lightning or a power surge or there's manufacturing issues and I'm pretty sure that if there were manufacturing issues they would have shown up by now it's been 25 years so i mean this is this is a pretty pretty bomb proof uh unit pretty nice you know this is a aluminum heat sink you know, BNC connectors that uh, a lot of the high quality equipment uses. It's, you don't really see that that much anymore. It's a shame. It's a shame that the repair industry died uh, the way it did. Uh, the last time I worked in the repair industry was in uh, about 2006 doing warranty work. And uh, even then, a lot of a lot of what it was was just board swapping. Uh, there, was, there was still a little bit of component level stuff done then, but not much, uh, not much at all. Um, I don't know how they do it today. I've heard from other employees that uh, things really just went. Uh, more just a straight exchange for customers that have problems with their their sets they would uh you know call and call a number and uh, uh it, it would just be exchanged straight across under warranty um it wouldn't even go to our shop that would you know it's, it's just not worth it for them you know, the, I mean, when i was working there we would still do sets you know crt sets that were you know 20 inches uh, 20 inch color CRTs um, anything less less than that size was basically was was just exchanged only then um, but we still did do uh, no we, we still actually did we did do some uh, it was a long time ago what we did uh, you know there's uh, a lot of thinking and uh, a lot of time and a lot of care that went into something like this. And I, I know there's stuff that's made, that, that is made better. Um, but uh, at this, this level of the market, at, uh, at the time this was made, you know, there really wasn't much that was better. Um, you know, Sony is a very common name uh, in this part of the world, North America. Um, United States and Canada. Uh, there were other manufacturers, NEC, uh, Hitachi, JVC. They were good. They were quite good. Uh, they were quite low failure. Um, every every manufacturer has models that uh, that do have uh, catastrophic failures. That that does happen. It's 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 like anything. I mean, there there will be certain models that have catastrophic failures and when i say catastrophic i don't mean you know violent or starting fires or anything like that but i mean a major component would fail and um, make the set basically not worth fixing like jvc used to have problems with deflection yokes going open um uh, in the 90s probably the uh the early 90s i remember and uh you know the the, the insulation on them was so poor that uh or it wasn't applied properly um and it would uh, deteriorate to the point where the copper would become exposed um the the windings of the yoke would short and uh, it would go open and that would be the end of your tv or monitor at the time um you couldn't fix them because by the time it became by the time it came to the shop uh there were many turns were damaged uh, you couldn't just uh, 
you couldn't just bridge them. It wasn't, it's just not that simple. You might be able to bridge one or two if you were lucky enough, but I never was able to do that. Um, it's, uh, without rewinding the entire yoke, which, I mean, yeah, it, it's possible, but it's just something for, you know, you know, consumer grade CRT set that most places are not going to do, and I, I don't blame them for that. Rewinding something is is a very uh, specific, time-consuming process. Uh, it's not just a matter of of uh, grabbing a roll of wire and taking the thing apart and 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 uh, you know and rewinding it. There's a lot that goes to it. It has to be exactly the same. Uh, inductance and impedance as the original. Um, I'm guessing that the original was just the original yoke. Yokes were either not available or um, too expensive to replace. But I'm going off on a tangent here about JVC, not, we're, we're talking about Sony. Um, they usually had pretty good yokes. I don't really recall any of those failing. Flybacks, yeah, some of them had flyback failures. Uh, they were a little, some were a little expensive, some weren't that bad. Um, this is one I do not know about because I didn't really work with that many of these types of monitors. It was more computer monitors and uh, TVs. Um, but I think the, all we're going to do here now is uh, clean up. Clean it, you know, vacuum it out carefully with a very soft brush. There's nothing in here I have to worry about with, with uh, static discharge. Just uh, make it make sure it's unplugged, <laughs> obviously, and uh, get in there with a, a, a soft brush and uh, a vacuum kept at a safe distance, and uh, you know, clean it out, put it back together, and enjoy it. Uh, in my um, upcoming videos we'll be doing, we'll be concentrating on uh, repairs, uh, which I'll do together uh, with you. And um, we can look at uh, failure modes, why things fail, how we figure out uh, exactly what it is that's failed, how we can fix it, and if possible, uh, how we can make it better so it uh, it doesn't happen again. Uh, and if that's the kind of thing that you like, then uh, by all means, uh, feel free to come back and uh, and uh, and watch. Um, yeah, so I guess uh, that's uh, all for now. And, uh, have a good day.